Welcome to another edition of Sparky Help, and this time we're going to be looking at Easy Guide to Maximum Demand and Diversity in an Electrical Installation using the on-site guide for any assignments that you may have up and coming for your electrical qualifications or for those just wishing to understand what Maximum Demand and Diversity is all about. So what is the Maximum Demand? The Maximum Demand is the amount of electrical energy used throughout a period of time and look at the amount of electrical energy used throughout the time of a day starting from first thing in the morning um, so as you start to get up you turn on kettles your energy will go up the amount of things you turn on and off will rise and fall throughout the day and finally by the end of the evening it will start to peak before going to bed and it drops back down and so the whole process starts again why do we need to know it it's an assessment of the load on an existing installation is what it actually is requirements for a new supply for the distribution system operator, which is a new addition they've added into the BS7671 uh, on the 2022 edition, formerly known as the DNO, this is your supply company. The supply company will often need to know what your maximum demand is. If you're asking for a new supply, then this is information and they will ask from you. But also it's required on the electrical installation certificate. For anyone filling one of these in, whether you're adding a new circuit, new distribution board or a new install completely, then maximum demand is required on the actual test certificate. As we can see on the electrical installation certificate, we have particulars of installation referred to and in there we have can see maximum demand, the load. And the maximum demand can be expressed as either KVA or as amps. And as it says on there, you delete as applicable. What often people will do is they will look at the incoming service and on here we can see that it's a 100 amp supply on the service head and here is a three phase 100 amp service head and this gets recorded the protective devices gets recorded on supply characteristics which is part of the electrical installation certificate which you can see there as a 100 amp and that would be a 100 amp would be three phase or single phase what the maximum demand is not is it is not supposed to be the 100 amps that the fuse is because it's a misconception and a common error is that people write in the maximum demand, they write the protective device size uh, on the incoming supply. Well, that's not what it's for. If it was what it was for, then we don't need the maximum demand. We just use the protective device. But if you were to think about it, if you see maximum demand on an electrical installation certificate, and in theory, if we ever do new work, you should ask for the previous test sheets. Good luck on that. But if you did happen to see them, if you saw the maximum demand was 100 amps and you wanted to add uh, a new electric vehicle car charger, for instance, and the incoming supply was already 100 amps, then basically if you were to trust the previous person who wrote that out, basically what you're saying is there is no more capacity in the system and you'd need an upgrade of supply. So you'd probably have to reassess yourself to see whether it is correct. Well, this is what the uh, on-site guide says with regards to maximum demand. And it says the information and values given in this appendix are intended only for guidance because it is impossible to specify the appropriate allowances for diversity for every type of installation and such allowances call for special knowledge and experience. This happens to be straight from the 2022 version, but it's the same in all other previous versions. And it's that keyword, impossible. So it is very, very subjective. You're just effectively guessing uh, and not actually putting a meter on over a period of time to record what that happens to be. So the question is, do we put KVA or amps? So KVA, is K meaning thousands, so uh, VA is the volt amps, so it's literally the volt times amps. But it's not power, because if otherwise it would be watts. So KVA has power factor taken into consideration, so you basically ignore the power factor in KVA. It's this value here, the KVA is what electricity companies would ask for, is what's your maximum demand? And watts doesn't really tell them anything because you could have a really bad power factor and your KVA would be much higher. KVA is the preferred value of demand by electricity companies and hence we can put it on the electrical installation certificate as expressed as KVA. So how do we actually work this out? As always, there's always examples we can never look at. So we've got a single phase and a three phase property. Both have an 80 amp supplies. What would their maximum demand be in KVA if that were the maximum from it? For a single phase installation, the KVA is literally, as we've said, 
is volts times amps and then divide by a thousand to give us K. So if we put that in, that's 230 times 80, divide that by 1000, and the answer would be 18.4 kVA. So what you'd write on your test sheet, delete the amps and write 18.4. Well, if it's a three phase installation, we have this formula. kVA equals square root of three times VL times I divided by 1000. Root three, obviously it's just a number as 1.732, times VL, that's the line voltage, so that's 400 volts, times the current. So we have root 3 times 400 times 8, and then divide that by 1000 to give us kVA, and that would be 55.425 kVA for each of those. So single phase or three phase, they would be the maximums for uh, 80 amps, so that's how you could work that out. Well, what about amps? Because amps is going to be used, it's the amps per phase that you need to put on, so not the total. It's the amps per phase is what we're interested in. So a single phase, three phase, exactly the same again. What would we express this time? So for a single phase installation, you'd just write 80 amps and delete the KVA, make sure you delete it. On a three phase installation, it also is 80 amps. But then the question might be, well, if they're both 80 amps, how would you know if one is three phase or one is single phase? Well, don't, don't forget the supply characteristics. We have to tick whether it's a three phase or a single phase and write the voltages in. So here we can see if it's a single phase installation, one phase, two wire, and you'd write 230 volts. For a three phase, for this example, three phase, four wire, 400 stroke 230. So just looking on the test sheet, you'd be able to see whether it's single phase or three phase. So what is diversity? Um, diversity means the assumption that not everything will be used at the same time. So loads will turn on and off and even if you did have a load turn on they might not be pulling their full power. So it's a guesstimation, it's what it can only actually be on the usage of electrical energy within a building or property. So using the on-site guide, what the on-site guide allows us to do is to apply factors or percentages of what the power happens to be or the current. So in appendix A of the on-site guide, we have a section in there which allows us to use as guidance, and this is, remember this is a guide only, but bear in mind they've already said it's impossible to tell, so they've already put a disclaimer in the front, and rightly so, as we'll see. Uh, so it's broken down, and you'd basically look at the type of property, and then they break down the circuit. So for all the different types of circuits they refer to, and it's not every single one you'd ever come across, it's household, small shops, small hotels and obviously you pick the best description that fits you remember the on-site guide only covers installations up to 100 amp whether it be single phase or three phase so this is the information for individual household installations so what they're basically saying there's your circuits one to ten there's only ten circuits that they refer to so lighting for instance they're saying is 66 percent of the total current demand so whatever your current demand is they're saying 66 percent of it is what we allow for diversity so in other words 66 percent of the lights will be on at any time now this is i would say on all cases all of these are very generous percentages because the actual realities are they're probably a lot lot lower than this heating and power as you can see on there um they have to elaborate on that though but but c3 to 8 below for heating and power what they define as heating and power and you have to make an assumption which one fits where so if the heating and power fits as long as it's not under three to eight it's below it's a cooking appliance motors water heaters thermostatically controlled instantaneous warm floor warming or thermal storage if it's not one of those that it comes under heating and power and what they're basically saying on this one 100 percent of the total current demand up to 10 amps so the first 10 amps and then 50 percent demand of any in excess of 10 amps and we'll look at some examples and see how that works uh the standard cooker one that you may for those people who have done this before will know that it's the first 10 amps of your load and then 30 percent of the remainder that you add on to it and if there is a socket outlet on your cooker control unit then it's another five amps that's added so we'll look at all of these and as you can see some of them have diversity some do not the, the interesting one that you probably need to look at is the number nine on the right hand side there that's standard arrangements for final circuits in accordance with appendix h if you were to go look at appendix h appendix h is your ring final circuit 
and your radial circuits, so your A1, A2 and A3 circuits, which is your 32 amp ring, your 32 amp radial and a 20 amp radial circuit. So if you've got radial socket circuits, they're 13 amp sockets, then it's number nine that you go to. If it's any other type of socket outlet, then it's number 10. As you can see, it doesn't make any difference. They're both the same anyway in their percentages, but they, they're not the same for all the other categories. So let's have a go at doing this to a fairly typical installation for a domestic installation. To do that, we need information. So I've put together just a standard distribution board schedule. And as we can see on this, this is a single phase installation. And basically we've got the circuits one to nine and we'll look at what those circuits happen to be. So we've got a shower, cooker, kitchen sockets, downstairs sockets, upstairs, immersion, heater, garage supply, lights, downstairs and upstairs, and their protective devices as shown there. To make this more accurate though, what we'd need to know is the design current. So if you've designed it, then you could have the design current to hand. So there we can see the design currents for each of those. Now the maximum demand would be, if you didn't apply any diversity, would be add all those design currents up. And as you can see on there, then for the nine circuits that we've got there, if you turned everything on and everything pulled to current that we have designed for it, then the maximum demand would be 197.4 amps, which is obviously quite large. So therefore we can apply diversity from the on-site guide. So using the on-site guide, we can have a look. And if we looked at a shower, and a shower in this case, in my example, is an instantaneous shower. So if you were to look at that, it says no diversity applied. For the cooker, remember, that's the first 10 amps. So we take 28 minus 10 away from it, and then we find 30% of the remainder. So we find 30% of 18. And then we add that 30% back onto the 10 that we originally had. For the sockets, remember they come under Appendix H, and what that said was 100% of full load of the largest circuit, well they're, they're all 32 amp in this case, so we take 32 amps and then 40% of all other circuits, and we put those on. The immersion heater, well that's thermostatically controlled, so no, no diversity, so that stays as it is. The garage supply we'll put down as power, so that said the first 10 amps and then 50% of the demand in excess of 10 amps. So hopefully we'll be able to work that one out. That's 10 amps and then 50% of the remaining 10. So that should be 15. And then lights downstairs and lights upstairs, it said apply a 66% diversity. So if we look at those, these are our new figures. So you can see the shower's not changed. The cooker has dropped from 28 to 15.4. The sockets have changed apart from one circuit. The immersion heat is unchanged and the lights have dropped slightly and so have the garage supply. And if we add those up, the maximum demand has dropped from 197.4 to 139.7 amps. So this would be our maximum demand. Now, there is a slight problem with this because this house would probably have a 100 amp incoming supply. So what we're basically saying using the on-site guide is the incoming supply is not big enough. But I know and you know every house will have similar circuits. This is not unusual. Some would have more, some would have fewer. I, I grant you that. And obviously the problem is with the on-site guide is it's a very blunt instrument. It will work it out if you don't have any other information. So they've erred on the side of caution. So it always comes out higher than what it actually is. If you were to actually apply diversity to it, and remember, it's impossible to do that, it might be 20% overall of that 197. That might drop down to something like 40 amps is what it might typically be, but we wouldn't know because you don't know who's using it and how they're using it. So 139.7, but if your electricity company asks, you would have to say you'd need a 140 amp supply to run this, but which you know that wouldn't be required. Well, who knows? It might do. It depends how they're going to use it. So let's look at a three phase one. So I've got the same circuits more or less, and but this time I put them over three phases. Now if we look, we've got the maximum demand, we've got 197.4, and with, with our diversity we've still got 139.7. But remember, this is over three phase. So what we need to do is we need to divide those answers by three. So we get the amps per phase. So without diversity, it drops down to 65.8 amps per phase. And then with diversity, we've dropped down to 46.4. 
five, six amps per phase. So for three phase circuits, it's easy just to divide by three. Now you might think, well, I could just add all the L1s and L2s and L3s up and you'll get that. That's very difficult, but remember, it won't be accurate because of the way we do it with this one here, for instance, if you can see that, it's 32 amps. We leave that as is and it's the other two circuits we drop in percentage on this occasion. So it would look like that particular phase might be higher than the others. Um, and it, in reality, it isn't. It's just the way the calculation happens to work. So it, the easiest option is just divide by three and that will give you an approximation of what you've got per phase. Remember, this is not an exact science. Remember what the opening statement was. So I've done something similar again, but this time I've added in a three phase circuit. Now I've displayed it, as you can see on here, so I've got the same circuits we've got before, but this time I've put an AC unit in. It's on a 40 amp protected device. The design currently is 38. So this time it's the first 10 amps plus 50% of the remainder, and we've got to 19 amps. Now remember this is three phase, so that's 19 amps per phase. So we need to make sure when we add this up, we don't add it up wrong. So if we look on the left hand side, we add all the single phase circuits up and that was the 197. But we have a three phase circuit and I've given the amps per phase, that comes to 38. What we then have to do is the maximum demand without diversity. 197 divided by 3 gives you 65.8, which means we can then add back on the 38 amps, giving us a grand total now of 103.8 amps per phase. So that's with maximum demand with no diversity applied. On the right hand side now we've got all the diversity applied and we can see that the AC unit had its diversity applied which is 10 amps plus 50% of the remainder which takes us to a grand total of 19 amps. As before the single phase circuits with diversity become to 139.7 and there's that three phase circuit at 19 amps. The 139.7 we can divide by three that gives us 46.56 and we add back on the 19 amps because remember that's 19 amps per phase anyway. So that takes us to a grand total of 65.56 amps for a three phase circuit with diversity. So what do we learn from using the on-site guide for maximum demand? Well, what we do know is it errs on the side of caution, but if you have no other information, it is better than nothing. However, with experience and over time, you will get better at calculating or estimating in this case, maximum demand. So we bring you back to the statement from the on-site guide, which basically said it was impossible to specify the appropriate allowances for diversity for every type of installation that so requires special knowledge and the key thing here experience which we will get the more testing you do the more knowledge you will gain the better you will be at assessing a maximum demand on an installation but we can take the guesswork out with the advent of new technology and that is the advent of smart meters smart meters have been around for a long time for commercial installations and if you have a get a chance to look at the meter press the button on the front and it will register things like maximum demand and you can see there on the left hand side what the vast majority of meters will actually measure you can see there's a fair bit but there is one that would be quite relevant to us in this case which is power maximum demand which is not maximum demand in kva however it is a recorded maximum demand over the lifetime of that meter or the period of time that that has been measuring electrical power. So it would be more accurate than the GUESS and the on-site guide and therefore would be a much better one to put on inspection and test EIC certificates in future. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much. Please like, share and subscribe and goodbye.